guys, it's Krithika. Welcome back to my channel. Firstly, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I'm super excited to be talking about them later on in this video. But in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to take self-portraits. So I've already made two or was it three videos on this topic where I basically vlogged myself taking self-portraits. And if you're looking for self-portrait ideas, then I'll leave links to those videos. Do check them out. But in today's video, I'm actually going to be teaching you how to take self-portraits and also sharing some photography tips so that you can make your photos better. Here are some photos that I've taken of myself either at home or during my travels and I think I've definitely gotten better at self-portraits over time and with a lot of practice. I've been into photography ever since I was a kid because my dad was super interested in photography and he taught me the basics and over time because this is my job now I've developed some skills but a lot of times I see people making these simple mistakes with their photos well I don't really want to call them mistakes because photography is an art and obviously you can do whatever you want with it but there are some general rules of photography which if you follow them can make your photos look so much better and I'm going to be sharing some of those tips with you today so keep on watching. So before I start here's a quick rundown of the equipment I'm going to be using today. So I've got my Sony a6500 with a Sigma 16mm lens. Obviously you don't need this setup you can just use your phone to take photos. In fact I made a whole video taking amazing self portraits using just my phone so you really don't need to be using this fancy setup but for the purpose of this video this is the camera and lens I'm going to be using. I've also got a tripod which is from Manfrotto. So the basics of taking a self-portrait is to find a frame you like, set your camera and tripod, use a remote or a self-timer to click, pose and then take your shots. So that's essentially the process but in this video I'm gonna get into the details and share a lot of tips with you guys. So the time right now is 4 p.m. Uh, which is basically golden hour. So golden hour in case you don't know is the time right after sunrise or before sunset when the lighting is amazing and the photos you take during this time will automatically be a lot nicer. So it is a bit cloudy from what I can tell but hopefully the photos will turn out okay. So for today's video I'm in my garden and I'm gonna be taking some photos here and this brings me to my first tip which is to examine your location so every time I have to take photos whether it's on a trip or in a hotel room or outdoors or indoors anywhere I try to like go around the location and get a sense of what frames might look good and make a mental note of that I try to look at the colors the patterns and textures and the lighting when I'm looking for a frame so usually what I do is I take photos of different frames that I like and then examine them and see which frames I like best and those are the ones where I actually go and pose and take photos of myself. So this is tip number one. The second tip is to pay attention to your outfit. Now I know this sounds trivial but it makes such a huge difference. This is something I didn't do for the longest time and there have been times when I've been out in the greenery wearing green and blending in which trust me looks really bad in photos. So uh, this is something I feel like you should think before hand so that you can wear something that complements the background and the frame you're gonna be in. So right now because I'm in a garden I decided to wear this white flowy dress. It's got a floral print which goes with the garden theme as well and because it's white it stands out, doesn't blend in with the background and it's not super jarring as well. So this really depends on the look you're going for. Maybe you want to blend in in which case wear green by all means but it really depends on you and I think it's important to give this a thought beforehand so that your photos look better. Now moving on to some composition tips. The first rule is probably one of the most popular rules of photography. It's called the rule of thirds and what it says is that on your camera when you have the grid lines turned on you basically have like two vertical lines and two horizontal lines and the rule of thirds says that the subject of the photo, which in this case is going to be me, should be either at the intersection of any of those two lines where those two lines meet or it should be on one of those lines itself. So to put it in simple words, don't place the subject in the middle of the photo, keep it slightly off center to the left or to the right depending on what looks better in that frame. So for example, from a photography point of view, in this frame rather than me being in the center, if I do this and maybe look that way, this probably makes for a better photo. So this is just a simple tip which makes such a huge difference in your photos. And adding to this tip, another mistake that I see a lot of people making is that when you're doing a photo where you're looking to the left, try to keep yourself on this side of the frame so that you can actually see what's in the background to the side where you're turning rather than keeping yourself in the other side. I don't know if I'm doing a good job of explaining but basically if you're looking that way then keep one thirds over here and then two thirds over here so that the majority portion is in the side where you're looking. Another tip to make your photos look better is to add some foreground. 
So adding a foreground to one of the corners of your photos makes the photos look so much more professional. Now if you're confused what a foreground is, it's basically the opposite of background. So this is the background and anything that comes in the front is a foreground. So this creates a really nice depth and adding like a blurred out foreground is one of my favorite ways of making photos look nicer. Now just as an example, I've got a leaf and I'm going to be showing you how this works. So this is just the subject and the background. Now if I add this foreground element, it's nice and blurred out but it also adds some depth which I think is a really cool effect to have in your photos. I learned this tip and a lot of other photography skills on Skillshare. At this point, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video because I have been such a huge user of Skillshare. I've even spoken about them in some of my previous videos before our partnership even happened and I can't think of a better sponsor for this video because Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring classes that fuel your creativity and curiosity. They have classes on lots of fun topics like videos, photography, design, illustration, productivity and even entrepreneurship. As a member you get unlimited access to all their classes. I feel like in the past few months especially because I've been at home so much I've ended up doing a lot of classes on Skillshare and one class that really stood out to me is Instagram Worthy Photography by Brandon Wolfel who is one of my favorite photographers. In case you haven't heard of him, I'm sure you've definitely seen at least some of his photos because they're very popular on the internet. I've been a huge fan of his photography so it was really cool for me to see that he has a class on Skillshare. In his class, he gives a lot of shooting tips, editing tips. I particularly found his editing tips so helpful because he has this very unique style of editing so I definitely recommend recommend checking out his class. The first 1000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership and after that it's just under $10 per month if you sign up for their annual plan. So definitely check out the link in my description, get the free trial and see if you like it. Another composition tip is to make use of leading lines. Leading lines are a clever way in which you can draw the attention to the subject and make your photos look more aesthetic. So basically you need to find lines that sort of lead to the subject which is what I've tried here with this walking track and this isn't the best frame but when you're taking photos this trick usually works wonders. I think a really good example are railway tracks. If you take a photo standing in the middle of railway tracks, the train tracks kind of form this really cool leading line which leads to the subject which is you who is standing there. So I think that's one good example but uh, you can use this in so many different ways. In fact even this pavement here could be used as a leading line if the camera was there and I was sitting so the tips I've shared so far are not really specific to self-portraits, I think they're more like general photography tips. But if you're taking self-portraits, one great tip is to shoot in continuous mode. So I feel like most cameras have continuous mode, even if you're shooting on your phone, uh, there's burst mode and stuff like that. So make use of that. Once you figure out the frame that you like, go and pose and shoot in continuous mode so that uh, the camera can capture all your different poses. And usually this helps you capture the movement. On cameras, you can also set the interval that you want photos to be taken. I don't think you can do this on phones but usually on my camera I set like a 0.5 second interval so every 0.5 second it's taking a photo which I know is too much. I end up with like a lot of photos but what I like is that uh, a lot of times the movements I'm doing uh, end up being captured better this way and of the many photos I get a lot of them turn out to be nice so just as an example if I want to do like a hair flip shot so if I'm doing it this way if I was just posing I'd have to like pose like this and like wait for the self timer to like be done but if I was shooting in continuous mode it would capture the whole process of like me doing the hair flips so you might get like different expressions different movements different angles so I think it just ends up looking more natural than a post shot so this is something I do very often this next tip is something that is very useful especially if you're a content creator like I am so every time I'm in one location I try to take many different shots just so that I can make the most of that location because in most likelihood I'm probably never gonna go back to that place so uh, it's a good idea to take as many photos as possible and also create like a bank of photos to use when you're not traveling and when you don't have any content to post so that you can still remain active on Instagram so this is something I and a lot of other creators do as well so I typically take like a close-up shot a wide angle shot a mid shot a sitting down and posing standing up and posing just like a lot of variety in the same location so even with this frame that you see here 
I can totally see like a close up, wide angle, mid shot. I don't know how sitting and posing here will look, but standing up, doing different poses, like a lot of shots can be taken with just this particular like setup in the back. So always think of how many different shots you can take in a particular location. Now coming to the last tip, which is about posing, which is something I used to be very awkward about, but I've had to learn to get better at it. So when it comes to posing, what I do is basically figuring out the pose that I like and then just making minor tweaks to it. So I take a lot of test shots in the same frame. So once I've figured out what frame I like, best. I take a few different shots, uh, trying out different poses and usually when I look at those photos I can instantly tell that one particular pose looks the best. So I just stick to that pose and then make minor tweaks in my expressions or how I tilt my head or just like my hands placement and stuff like that. So that's how I go about it. Sometimes I'm confused and I have like two three poses which I like so then I'll just try all of those poses and take shots but usually I think one pose stands out compared to the others in that particular frame. I think one easy hack when it comes to posing is just using props because then you just have to like use the prop or hold the prop and you don't really have to worry about what to do with my hands and stuff like that. So props like sunglasses, books, hats, even shadows and flowers, anything, literally endless options when it comes to props. And another thing which I've learned the hard way is that whatever is closer to the camera is going to look bigger. So for example, if I stand this way, this portion of my body is going to look bigger. But if I stand this way, then my face is going to look bigger, which sounds like common sense. But when you're posing, a lot of times you tend to forget this. So if you want to look taller and your legs to look elongated, then you should ideally put like one leg in front of the camera and elongate it and pose that way. And maybe shoot from a lower angle as well because that usually makes you look taller but yeah when it comes to posing I feel like a lot of it is just practice and confidence and it really helps to have like two three go-to poses so that you're not awkward when your photos are being taken I think it's less awkward to pose with self-portraits which is why I love self-portraits but even otherwise I think it helps to have like two three standard go-to poses but posing is something I feel you only get better at it the more you try so the key is to keep practicing and finally taking self-portraits is supposed to be a fun process so don't stress out through self-portraits I feel like I've gotten a lot more confident being on camera and posing and it's also made me feel a lot better about my body which I think is great so I urge you to just have fun with this it's okay if your photos don't turn out the way you expect them to when you're starting out keep at it just have fun or uh, try different angles and frames you can also look for inspiration online I particularly love Pinterest for like any kind of inspiration and of course Instagram as well so make this a fun process for yourself because that's the whole point of this and with with that we come to the end of this video i hope you enjoyed watching and learned a thing or two comment and let me know if you found this video useful also give this video a like because it's so hot outside and i've been filming for two hours now so hit that like button subscribe press the bell button if you don't want to miss any of my videos and i will see you guys next time bye